M. Fletcher Brown with another artist video blog, kicks96country.com. Our guest today is returning champion to kicks96country.com, our video artist video blog section. He's been here before. It's been a minute. Please welcome back our good friend, Ken Dimash. How are you, Ken? Fantastic. Awesome to be here. All right. Now, now okay. It's Like I said, you, you, you took about a decade off uh, from visiting, well, us anyway, so... I'm trying period, to remember. Period. The last time you were here, it, it wasn't Ding Dang Darn It. I think it was Countryfied. You were getting Countryfied uh, last time you were here, weren't you? I might have. It was one of the two. We did well, Countryfied, and then we did Ding Dang Darn It. And okay. Well, maybe it was. It was a decade. Well, then maybe it was Ding Dang Darn It. Maybe that was the last time yeah, you were here. It sounds longer when you say decade. It does. Yeah. does. yeah, when you start measuring your life in decades, it feels weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that now. Yeah, I just yeah. realized the song that I just put out on uh, streaming, I thought I... I Felt like I wrote it two years ago, <laughs> and then on my computer I looked it up, and it was like 2010. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. feel, and it's really it has a really current feel. But yeah, time yeah. is like water. That's like crazy. it just just you know you it just starts to flow, and before you know it, it's just you got to do what you got to do in uh, the moment, though. But you know, as a as an artist and a songwriter, isn't that you know for you anyway? Isn't that a good thing? You know, because you as you grow and learn and experience life, you know. Yeah, you know, you watch, you know, your 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 family grows and evolves, your kids grow up, because like all your kids are adults now, right? Yeah. See, all much. my kids are adults now. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. when I first met you, our kids were still like young and living. Yeah, at home I was just and... starting to coach soccer and yeah, taking them to karate. Yeah, and yeah. now they're like, you know, calling you from on the road, going, they're giving me advice on how to do all this. I might see you at holidays, Dad. You know that kind of thing. If, right. If they bother to come home at all. Oh, my kids are great. Really? They, they've been. Mine great. are terrible. Really? Yeah, they're all. Great. Oh, I don't believe it. I want to. Talk to me about your kids. I want to be jealous of your kids. My kids, they well, my daughter, my daughter's getting married. Oh, congratulations! Wow, yeah, right. yeah. I just, yeah, I don't feel old enough for that, but yeah, nah. she's getting married. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, I got into music because of my daughter. Really? I would take her to uh, piano lessons. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to sit in the room reading the magazines. You know, all the parents that it's like, oh, I was like, no. So I took lessons uh, at the same time. She'd go into a, a room, I'd go into a room, and I was like learning chords, you know. And then my teacher was like, well, you're learning really quickly, but you know, you're you're gonna slow down. I'm like, <laughs> done. Let's go somewhere else and take lessons. And I kept getting new teachers and I to to accelerate. But and then we would go out for dinner. I'd have like a a, a daughter, a daddy daughter mm -hmm. date night, mm -hmm. and we'd go to this restaurant and this guy would play music and I'd be studying a chord. And I was like, oh, that's a that's a G. Okay, so I'm learning. Go to piano. Go to watch a guy play. And then one night he's like, you know, we asked her to get up and play, and she sang a song super cute mm -hmm. you know and then he asked me to sing and i was like all right anyway, <laughs> it all kind of spiraled and uh, my one of my sons he just graduated college <sighs> yeah. you know and uh and then my other son he's just starting college okay see yeah. And you know, it's like three kids. I got three kids. You know, all, well, my oldest just gave me a granddaughter, so I'm oh, happy wow, that she wow, her and her wow, husband. Different yeah, chapter. her and her oh. husband, and they, she sends me pictures of my my grandbaby all the time. Yeah, yeah thank wild. you, thank you very much. She's like six months old, and it's like, and it's, she's in that perfect place, that perfect baby place. You know, yeah, wow. And it's like when that when you know when Pop holds her, she just falls asleep, and then I just melt. You know, oh, so wow. I'm just laying there with the sleeping baby. So those are the moments that I believe that's that's what music is. That's what country music is. Right. You know, uh, it's we we live, we learn, we grow, we experience. And if you've got a talent like you, you can turn it into a song. Um, you share that experience with uh, the rest of us. And we all have that 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 place that we can go to and go. Yeah, I, I have something like that in my life that's similar. And that's that's how we. Feel, right. 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 That's, the, that's the coolest feeling. All right. So with that, let's let's talk about the current single. If I was a beer. Um, <laughs> if, you're getting all deep. Yeah, <laughs> because I did so that on purpose. You see what I did yeah, there? Bam. Yeah. I'm talking about. Beer. I'm talking about just like how you know, like music brings us to. It's connective tissue. You know, right, right. we get real existential, and then I'm like, so now you've got this song. If I was a beer. Right. 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 I'm not trying to take myself serious <laughs> in that song. That you know, and you know, you can take life experience. You you have the experience of how hard life is, how mm -hmm. complicated life is. I talk to so many people, they wake up at three o'clock in the morning, every morning, well, you do, I do, you, you're worried about different things, whether it's your parents or your kids or your job, you, it's just like, oh, and you know, like, that's normal. Yeah. That's a norm. That's like, I tell people like, don't, you know, maybe I'm, it's not medical advice, but I'm like, it's not, it's not, I can, my advice is keep a pad of paper next to your bed uh -huh. and I get up and I write, and usually I get up and write a song. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm really nervous about something. And then I'm like, I write down what I'm, what I'm thinking about and what I need to take care of. And then I go to the piano, I put the, you know, the headphones on the piano, I play piano for a little bit. And it kind of gets me in my happy place and yeah. I go back to bed. So it's like a 20 minute thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so life's really serious. If I was a beer, you know, 
it's just fun. Like, you know, in, in my day, my day life, my, my best thing is when people go, this was fun. Yeah. When you're working, it's like, why not have fun? Mm-hmm. Well, where'd the idea come from? So picture going to a party yeah. and uh, you show up with like, you shall show up with like burgers mm-hmm. or beer. You show up with ice cold beer. Yeah, you're do. you're popular. Yeah, I just showed up with a bucket. I didn't bring a bucket of beer, yeah. but I bought a bucket of beer stuff. I would have been happy with a bucket of beer. I would have been okay with that. I have I'm a long story you know. about that. All right. I, yeah, but uh, but <laughs> so you show up with a bucket of beer. Everybody's like, Kenny, you yeah. know, boom! And everybody wants a beer, and everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Picture being the beer. <laughs> you know, so it's like, and and <laughs> I literally in my life never ever thought, man, man I wonder know, what it's like to be this to beer. To be a beer, how's the beer? You know, it's like everybody's I've like, never, yeah, oh, you yeah. know, and then picture people are like, they're down on their luck. I picture talking to my best friends at a bar when things aren't going right, and you're just sitting there peeling the label, and you're just focused on the beer, you know, and, you, and it starts to sweat, and you're like making pictures in the beer. It's like, man, if I was a beer, you'd pour your heart out to me. You, I'd be your best friend. I'd be there for you. And if I was a beer and we're partying with all of our friends, we're hitting cheers, you know, it's like if I was a beer. That that and why why where I have no idea where it came from. All every song is just like a gift from God. It literally and that's why they're all over the place. It's like some are real serious. Yeah. Some are. You know, well, this song is fun. I mean, fun. sir, yeah, if if I was fun. a beer, it's it's kind of hard. No, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's like you you see a song that sounds like if I was a beer, you're thinking, am I gonna like this song? Am I gonna like this? And then you hear it and you're like. All right, you know, it's kind of hard not to like this song. Awesome. It's kind of hard not to just get into it and be like, yeah, okay, that, that's cool. <laughs> the other thing is when we went into studio, you know, it's also, you can write all these songs and then you get with a producer and you have like 20 songs that you think are all, mm-hmm. you know. Well, how they produce them, you know, my wife's always like, I'm like, do you like this song? She's like, I don't know. I got to hear it. I'm like, I just played it. It's like, no, no, no. I got to hear what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, you go in with three chords and a vocal. Mm-hmm. And you come out with all this stuff. And I, so the intent was, you know, like, we were last week, and my wife and I were in downtown Broadway. Oh, man. <laughs> I was a bear. I was, <laughs> I was the bear. I was right. having so much fun. We had filmed two music videos that are the next one. And, and at 3 o'clock, it's like, that's a wrap. And I looked at my wife. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. It's like mm-hmm. we've been stressed out getting all the props, doing all the stuff. She had to act, and we had actors and everything. And we hit downtown. We walk into the bar. We're on the rooftops of all the places, and it's just like you're walking in, just going, "Yeah!" And yeah. Just and you just you get the crowd going. It's so much fun. You feel, you feel like a bear. <laughs> and uh, hey, I forgot. I'm off on a tangent, but uh, that that song is just just about having fun. Not taking myself serious yeah. as an artist. Not taking the world serious because the world's serious. Mm-hmm. About well, I mean, uh, as... oh, I forgot. I forgot where I was going. Okay. Uh, so we went into the studio, the whole idea, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go for it. When we're downtown, there's just that, that, there's a beat, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's not, maybe they put a club mix into some of the songs. <laughs> I don't know. Probably. It just, it just Everything's that, got a club mix these days. It's got that bass, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want a little bit of that. Okay. I want, oh. I want that, that, mm, you know, when you're hearing it, you know, it's like just a little bit of, so they... Some of them we got a little bit out there. I mean, they're they're kind of almost like too heavy rock, almost mm-hmm. southern rock, and too you know. Well, I mean, you can it's your music you can play with. Yeah, you know, yeah, if it feels right. Right on, mm-hmm. right on. So, uh, like, we have another one coming out, and I was just, I I literally just at the risk of like you know driving my producer crazy. I'm like, ah, could you take the alarm sound out of the song? Because I had to have this alarm sound. The song's about you know going to Vegas, you party like a rock star. You wake up, it's kind of like a hangover, and you know, it's like you walk into the to the mirror, you're wetting your hair, you know, there's there's underwear on the counter, there's a diamond ring, you're wearing a ring, what is going on? You know, you're married, you're and the people are knocking on the door, you know, welcome mm-hmm. to the honeymoon mm-hmm. suite. You know, that kind of a song, right? And it's just it's an on fire song. Anyway, that's just like a totally different thing. Forgot where I was going again. <laughs> Get into it and the next thing you know That's why we like talking to Ken Demock. You know, because it's like it's a journey. <laughs> A conversation with Ken is a, it literally is a journey. Um, all right. So we've got the single, If I Was a Beer. Yeah. Uh, you're putting out um, music videos. Your wife, uh, incidentally, has been in like every music video I've ever done. Yes, all right. Because that's just, that's just going to happen. Uh, yeah. She's very supportive, which is great, you know, that yeah. you have that great support system and that she's so much a part of your musical process. Um, what about like the album? I mean, like, if, is the album done? Is it still coming? Yeah. Oh, so it's so weird now. It's like, when I mean, we did Countryfied. Yeah. We put the album out. And you heard it all. Yeah. And it's like, okay, here's the song we want to do this time. Here's the next song. Well, 
you know, a decade goes by and now it's this new thing of, all right, each song has its own uh, album cover, mm -hmm. almost, maybe, but some of these are released through radio and they have a long shelf life on radio. It takes a while to get momentum for, it's like, you know, see if people like it, let's just play it a little more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then you don't release the whole album. So we have a whole album. The album is called Welcome to My Rodeo. Yeah, and, you that's know, a great title, by the way. <laughs> thank you. And that, and I wanted to write a song. You know, so some of the songs you, you, uh, you know, you just wake up and you play them and you record. Always hit record because it's like dust. It's gone. It's mm -hmm. gone. Um, it's for Gazi. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, so on that one, um, I, I was, I was like, boy, it would really be cool, you know, do a big concert. You know, in my in my head, you know, I'm like playing some big stadium. I'm down in Nashville, big show. And what would be cool to start a concert? You know, and I'm picturing, you know, the flame shooters going yeah. up and all this stuff. And it's like, and just a stage of crazy circus party going on. It's like, welcome to my rodeo. And the and the idea of the rodeo is, you know, you got a guy center stage tearing up a six string. Mm -hmm. and, got, and it's like they're almost like the the ringmaster saying, you know, here's this dude doing that and that and um, let's get started, and it just has this thunderous build. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it, it, that was fun. It sounds like a Jason Aldean concert. It, it, it's, it's what it, yeah. In my head, it was like Jason Aldean and Big and Rich. Yeah, it's almost like going to like a CMA, and you get every, you know, Montgomery Gentry. Yeah. Every, everybody shows up and mm -hmm. just is on stage at the same time. Just mm -hmm. like uh, at the CRS. Yeah, that was insane mm -hmm. when they were doing Purple Rain. Yeah. You yeah, know, the the big disco party. Oh yeah. man, country that, radio seminar. Yeah, yeah. That so that in my head, that's uh, so that's the album's called Welcome to My Rodeo, and there's you know the whole album's ready. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing we're struggling with before we release the whole album, so we're, we did that was a beer, and then we just did a song called Life's Happening Now on just just digital. You know, mm -hmm. so you just like throw little pieces of it out every other month just to keep that little part going. And then uh, we're going to drop another one, uh, Drink About That, and then another yep. one in the spring mm -hmm. called Imagining. And so we're doing the filming on that. So mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, I'll see the first take on Imagining, like the producers for the filming. Um, so we have the album, and it doesn't get released until like next year. We just like hold it. Mm -hmm. And we had a whole other album in 2014. So I was going to release an album in 14. It's just been in a vault. Yeah. And so we're trying to decide, it's like, do we put that all as part of it? Do we? You know, like a double album release, you mean? Or? Yeah, it's, and that's probably, thank you, that's a great idea. Hey. Trying to figure that out. I'm here all week. Yeah, it's like, you know, but it has a different sound. It has, uh, you've heard uh, Jackson Dean's, uh -huh. uh, the, the song. I don't know if it's the, the one that's currently crushed on the radio. That's his current single, Fearless. Yeah, well, right before that. Uh, uh, don't, uh, come, don't Come Looking. I love that. That's a great song. Oh, my gosh. Great song. Man, and the sound of it, uh, and that, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, I was driving back to the producer uh, when we were recording, and you know, so you give your producer examples of stuff that you kind of like, so they're in your head, and it doesn't have to be country, you know. So I mean, I literally was sending stuff. Um, maybe I don't do this on air, but I mean, I think I sent him some Dua Lipa. Oh wow! And you know, and I and I have a song written that I was listening to Dua Lipa's Levitating and just like playing that like the way i would play it like which is you know five steps down mm -hmm. country four chord country and then i had a i heard something on the radio where it was about this couple or about this this girl that had met a guy at a bar and she thought that things were going great you know and and then just nothing materialized like the whole night he just like ghosted her i'm gonna go to the bathroom and she's like Know what happened <laughs> and and she said you know I, I took 20 different routes home that night trying to figure out you know what went wrong and you know i'm just like snap that's a song mm -hmm. you know it's like oh, yep. <laughs> 20 different routes home that night so i go back and i was i was playing Dua Lipa, and i like took some of those chords and they just get mashed up in your head mm -hmm. and the next thing you know you've got this you know that we didn't record that one that that yeah, well, that didn't make the cut. Dude, you don't you don't set up something like that and then say, well, there you can't hear it because it doesn't exist. <laughs> but it was great in my head. So legit, I we're going back into studio in September, and I'm like gonna say to him again, it's like, let's have another listen to that. I really think it crushes. You know, it's it's a it felt cool to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, the uh that Jackson Dean sound, um, this other album I had, I was like, well, if I don't release it, you know, my wife's just like going. 
hold those songs for later because they're just so good. You know, mm-hmm. She's like my little total like cheerleading section going, that's the bomb. That's, that's yep. epic. She's like, oh, I love that song. And uh, the song's called Tales of a Fiddleman. Mm-hmm. And that one I could drop out there. It's And it it's so well produced. Uh, David Bechtel, you're a genius. He was a producer. Um, it's so well produced. We were producing it uh, in a studio in Nashville, and Kenny Chesney was in the studio right next door. He was in the big expensive one. <laughs> so they, when you're in studios, they have the A room, uh-huh. the B room, and the C room, right? Uh-huh. The A room is like you're in yeah. a town of Nashville. The wood walls and everything, grand pianos, you know, and it's like you have every studio. And usually you'd use that for like a, a day to get everybody's, you know, but he's like there. That's his like. And then there's the B studio, which is, you know, that's where you might do some, I don't know, uh, guitar overdubs or something. And then there's the vocal booth. So see, so I'm in the C room, which legit was this big. It's like a broom it, closet. It, oh, the, the vocal booth was a broom closet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember singing in it and they had like lights in it to try to make it feel like more than a broom closet. Yeah. But it, and uh, so the, the uh, fiddle player on his album was there and I had the song called Tales of the Fiddle Man. And I didn't in any way ever imagine having a fiddle player on it. Really? I, I, had, I had pictured it more like you know, uh, Skinner was in the next door studio and their guitarist all came in, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you get uh, ACDC's guitarist and then Billy Gibbons walking in. I had this whole different thing in my head and they're like, yeah, uh, Kenny, uh, it's called Tales of the Fiddle Man, right? Maybe. I don't know. Crazy idea. Hear me out. Let's get a, let's get a fiddle. A fiddle player, <laughs> yeah. So the guy comes in, he's playing it, he's brilliant. And I was just like, uh, could we dirty that up a little bit <laughs> could we make it feel like them uh because there was a there's a bar that was down the street from when i first started playing music that i would go play and this guy would show up with an electric fiddle so it was hollow it's like a yeah and he put it into a, a pa mm-hmm. and put like an amp on him an overdrive and it sounded like you were playing uh, a gibson with a slide mm-hmm. that <laughs> never stopped like the neck just kept going because he would just be like it's it's the devil's fiddle from Devil Went Down to Georgia. Really? Yes. That's I did not know. No, that. no, I mean not that not literally. I mean that's what the sound is. What yes. So what you're describing, yeah. Yes. So I'm saying all that and the guy's like, I got you. Mm-hmm. I mean within like ten minutes. So the guy that's like walks into the studio, he hears the track, he does it, and I'm kinda like, ah, he kinda feels my vibe. He's like, I hear you. And just destroys it. So mm-hmm. every time I hear it, I'm just like into the whole matter of fact. The, the part that people don't get to uh, be, a, be a part of or have in their head is necessarily the actual making of the song. Mm-hmm. So when I hear the song, you know, I hear a lot of artists don't listen to their own music. Mm-hmm. I, I don't hear myself when I'm doing it. I just have that experience of everybody. You know, like uh, the first time I did uh, Saddle Up, I remember the guy in the studio, he just like, I'm like, I'm in, he can't like hear me, but I'm like, going, play some Skinner. Mm-hmm. You know, he just goes, ah. <laughs> takes a cigarette, puts it in the top, and just tears into it. And it was the coolest riff. I mean, so whenever I hear the song, I'm just rocking out because I picture, you know, Mike on the guitar. And I'm, anyway, uh, it'd be awesome if everybody was like, and then hopefully they yeah. get that when they hear the music. Well, well sometimes that can come through. It can. I, 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 I always tell people that if you ever get a chance, which it's rare to ever get a chance, but if you ever get a chance to sit in on a recording session, that's really some magic. That you know, seriously, in That's the right true. environment, it can be real magic. So when I found that song that I just now finally released that I'd written ten years ago in my computer, which is like a fifteen-year-old computer now, right? Mm-hmm. It still works. Great, I still use it to record all the time. I noticed this other file. I'm like, what's that? They had uh, at uh, Dark Horse Recording Studios in Nashville. They had some interns while we were recording the video, the whole thing. They're just like, and I mean, they're like doing all these crazy. I didn't know this. They had the bass player. They had the drummer. On one of the songs, just one of them, they had the whole thing. So we edited the whole thing down. I just posted it to YouTube like a couple of weeks ago because I thought that's oh, so cool. I mean, you, you you don't realize that the the bass player is just kind of sitting there, kind of almost bored, just kind of, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. just like you know, nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're on stage. And then the keyboardist was just kind of, kind of waiting. It's like all of a sudden they just kind of tear into the keys and just do all this stuff and uh it was we had all this random video the guitar player uh mike Payne. he's just sitting there all of a sudden you see him just going yeah (laughs) he was like like rocking into it and just like totally grinding into the uh into the guitar Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I, I just posted all that. So it's as close as I could get to just showing what it feels like to do that. All right, guys, with Ken Dimash. Honest to goodness, I could sit and talk to Ken for like you know, an entire afternoon. I absolutely could. Um, before I let you go, though, before I let you go, yes, the single is If I Was a Beer. You're going to love it if you haven't heard it. If you want to hear it, make sure you call us Kicks 96. We'll gladly pay it for you. Ken, if um, these folks who just sat here and listened to us talk yeah. uh, are just, they, they're just like, okay, I've got to learn everything I can about this guy. Right. Um, where do they find you on the internet? You just go to Ken Dimash, it's D O M A S H. Looks mm-hmm. like do the mash. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I didn't. I didn't grow up pronouncing it. It just was given to me. Yeah, should I start that? Is that a bad thing to start? <laughs> so if you go to Ken D O M A S H dot com, you'll be right. I'm gonna be uh, fine. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, and on my website, it, it, which was great too. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't reserve Ken Dimash dot com until like three months ago. The beauty of having the only name in the world that's Ken Dimash is you can get your website. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't know when the internet started, but you know, I don't know how. Yeah, there's like, not a guy in Indonesia named. Ken I don't know Dimash how just, Luke Combs got his, and everybody else got their names. I don't know how much they had to pay. Mine was, you know, you just ask for it mm-hmm. on whatever search engine. <laughs> Thank you. There you anyway, go. if you go there at the top, it has the Twitter. I don't know, see what they all are. I think uh, Ken Dimash Music is Facebook and Instagram, just Ken Dimash Music, and I think uh, Ken underscore Dimash is the Twitter and the. Uh, um, Let's go. TikTok? TikTok. It's just Ken Dimash. That's the easy yeah. one. And we post all kinds of things. I've been drawing a lot of the, uh, the beer cans and stuff and having, I like to draw. Um, so it's like a real time drawing to some of the music. It's been fun. So I've been dropping those on TikTok. And uh, if you do any streaming, it's on every streaming platform, just Ken Dimash. If you look under Countryfied or If I Was a Beer or, you know, any of the songs you're playing. I'm um, telling you right now. You're not going to be disappointed if you follow this man's socials. <laughs> Keep up with Ken Dimash. If I was a beer as a single, you want to hear it, call us Kicks 96. We'll happily play it for you. Look for a live performance from Ken Dimash here elsewhere on our artist video blog channel on YouTube. Ken, thanks for coming by and visiting. Cheers. Well, and you. don't wait another 10 years. To come I'm visit. Not. No, we've got it. We've got a schedule. We've got okay. a schedule. I'll be All back right. if you'll let me. He'll be back sooner than later. We'll see so. you next time on another artist video blog at 96.1 Kicks 96, kicks96country.com. If I was a bear, I bet you'd hold me, press your lips against me, tell me your story. If I was a bear, I bet you'd pour your heart out to me. If I was a bear, I bet you'd hold me.